Hey guys, Stu Rutherford here and welcome to a new episode of Glenn Murray Centurion Select. I'll waste no time in introducing today's guest, Andrew Kelly, who is back in the Scottish capital as head coach of Super 6 Club Heriot's Rugby. Andy, how are you getting on? Andrew, I should say. I've, just, I've done it straight away. I've said Andy. <laughs> no, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Uh, just surviving at the moment, but yeah, good. Well, we're looking at the stats, 164 games for Edinburgh between 2003-2013, which puts you fifth on our all-time appearance list between Mike Blair and Craig Smith. So it's not bad company to be in there. Yeah, yeah. I actually didn't realise it was that that many. I think I knew I got to 100, but I didn't think it was anywhere near that many. But that's good. That's good. To be fair, I mean, I was speaking to Chunk, and he's well over 200 games, and he thinks he's around about 300 games. He, he thinks half of them weren't actually recorded back then. So. All oh, right. Well, maybe. I mean, he did. He had a fair few games. To be fair. <laughs> so listen, tell us a little bit about the the new role. Obviously, back uh, back in Edinburgh, as I said there. How uh, have you got your feet under the table? How how's the kind of uh, the new coaching role? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it was all going really well. Um, managed to get a couple of games in. Um, with the squad and then uh, they were gearing up for their, their Super 6 semi-final and then um, unfortunately coronavirus hit and um, we've been locked down ever since March obviously so um, I was enjoying it uh, and now I've just got to be patient and plan and uh, and get ready for the, the season whenever it comes. And maybe just talk a little bit about your role before that I mean it's uh, fairly unusual to to obviously head out to Hong Kong and, and to spend time playing there and as well as coaching there. What what was it like at, at Valley, um, Valley RFC? Yeah, I, I went out there. So I was eight years in Hong Kong. So I went out there to start um, just to play a couple more seasons uh, and uh, do a bit of coaching, doing their minis and their under-19s, all the way up to under-19s. So um, that, was really, that was really good. And the level of rugby actually improved and improved uh, throughout the time I was there. And uh, ended up playing four seasons, which I really enjoyed. Really, really good getting back to like club rugby. And then um, I was asked to do the, the head coaching role. So I had four good year, four good seasons um, as head coach as well. Well, listen, I'm sure there's a few differences between uh, Hong Kong and Golden Acre, but we, we won't get into that. As we said, um, I chatted to you before. You obviously played with a, a wide range of, of different players, a lot of generations of really of Edinburgh players as well. So I think you're very well suited to, to the Centurion Select and we'll start off with a few questions. So listen, most uh, most skillful player you, you played with in your, your career at Edinburgh? Yeah, I think um, I think it actually has to be my wee pal, uh, Phil Godman. Um, he, we, we played age group rugby together and then played Edinburgh together and I just think he, he was one of the best attacking tens I've ever, ever played with. Um, he could, if you ran the right line, he would put you through a hole. You know, he was, he was just, he had that, um, that deft touch. And I think that was his skill, you know, and he was really, he wasn't afraid of, of, of attacking the line was Phil. So tough to be Phil Godwin. Would you say, would you add Mike Blair to that conversation as well? Him and him and Goddard uh, obviously had a great kind of partnership yeah, there as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and he was sort of, it was, uh, he definitely was in my thoughts there as well. Mike, I mean, Mike and Phil had a great partnership for a long time. So, um, yeah, very creative as well was Mike, yeah. Right, you, you can't say yourself for this next question, but uh, hardest player uh, <laughs> you played with at Edinburgh? Um, yeah, and, and again, there's, there's, there's so many that you could pick from. Um, but I'm going for pure durability. It'd have to be Alan Jacobson, the chunk man. Um, he just never was injured, that guy. Um, and then when we're actually playing, he led he led from the front and uh, just a, a tough customer all round was the chunk, I think. Did you ever uh, room with him? Um, yeah, a few times, a few uh, good away trips. Um, yeah, so he, he was a good roomie. Listen, this is all PG-13, so we won't get into that, okay? I'm keeping it that way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, next question, best overseas player. We've had a lot of them in Brooklyn. We've had a lot of great players to come over and play in the capital, um, who would be top of that list? Um, I would think for his, you know, the level of impact on the club um, all those years ago, it would have to be Todd Blackadder, I think. Um, you know, his on, his on the field play, you know, he really showed what professionalism was and his work rate and, 
and his dedication um, and and his and also just bringing the club together off the pitch. Um, yeah, I think he'd definitely be the best. Definitely. I guess another number eight to add to that list, Natani Talai. We chatted to him a while back. Very skillful guy, Fijian player. Yeah, um, played a bit with uh, Natani, and he w- he was class. Um, he was able to run through a brick wall and give you the offload. You know, like he had it all. Did uh, Natani? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Next question. Um, probably quite a few of these few of these guys in the changing room during your career. Who would be the funniest guy um, you perhaps played with? during your time in Edinburgh? Um, yeah, I would have to go, just for all-round amusement, would actually have to be Brendan Laney. Um, <laughs> he just was um, really good fun to be around. Um, mainly he laughed at my jokes, I think that's probably why. <laughs> but, um, he was a great guy, great to be around, um, and just just really loved being, a, being around the boys and, and just was a laugh, to be honest with you. So Brendan's my pick for that. What's your best uh, Brendan Laney story that you can that you can tell? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bathtub incident once, but um, no, I, he just generally just had like you know he was he was up for a, a few beers off the pitch uh, in training. He was he would he wanted to have a laugh. Uh, didn't take life too seriously, you know. He he just was all around good guy, you know. And he was of course he was kind of thrown into it straight away wasn't he he was he was straight into the Scotland team he took a bit of stick back then as well but looking back in hindsight he was a real kind of club legend wasn't he yeah I mean I think he, he really I think he would play he played sometimes at 10 12 uh fullback and he you know when he played at 10 actually he, he led us really really well uh, again another really skillful guy and and guy with you know amazing game management and a good rugby head on him you know um, so you know, for club, he w- I thought it was fantastic. I thought he was such a great player. Um, yeah, and then just got a bit of stick with the Scotland stuff, but just unfortunate, I guess. Probably the best celebration of all time as well. I think. I oh yeah, agreement on that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we got um, so kind of two questions here. So best and worst trainers in your career. We'll start with best. Um, yeah. And- this this yeah this is a tricky one. I really really couldn't. Um, couldn't separate the two meatheads uh, for this. Uh, it has to be Ali Dickinson and Alistair Strokosh. Uh, I can't actually separate the two. They just love the gym so much. Um, they would love a protein shake and discuss the new training regime, you know. Like, we, those guys are right into it. Um, so they would take the best trainers. Um, for the worst, unfortunately, it's going to have to be Phil Godman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really enjoy the gym and Ken McEwen's training programs or Potsy's programs, so it would probably be uh, Phil Godman for worst. <laughs> I guess there's no surprise to see that Stroker is now obviously in the S and C team, and uh, I mean that was he was kind of destined for that, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like a real passion for lifting weights, so um, he'd definitely be be up there. Yeah, but surely Goddard's that's just a, that's just a standoff. That's just a ten. He's not a bad trainer. He's just, just yeah. A 10. But, he just doesn't need it, you know. Bro, well, listen, I won't let you throw uh, anyone else under the bus. We'll, we'll go, go on to the next question. Um, toughest opponent you ever faced in the front row there? Going, you know, back to the days, going, to, going away to Ulster, going to Ravenhill, um, and, you know, Rory Best in the middle of that front row. Uh, you know, he was a tough, tough cookie and a tough competitor, you know, so I would have to go with... Um, Rory Best, and he was there for. I mean, again, he liked chunk, just durable. Yeah. He was there every every time we played, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, Rory Best for sure. And just just lead into this. What about proudest uh, moment of your career at Edinburgh? Well, towards the, towards the end of my career, I was lucky enough to um, uh, captain the side for for a few games. So, I would say that would just be the the, the pinnacle of my of my uh, Edinburgh career, definitely. And uh, yeah, quite a proud moment. So that would definitely be it, yeah. Finally, just to finish on, um, obviously lockdown restrictions, slightly easing now. Hopefully, I think a few beer gardens are open. Um, If you could and hopefully will meet one player that you played with during your time at Edinburgh, who would it be for a pint? Um, It would probably have to be my big pal, Scott Murray. He's, um, He's 
uh, he's in America just now, but um, I've not seen him in a while, so he would be my uh, man to go and have a pint. Uh, along the same lines as Brendan Laney, quite a good guy to, to go out and about with. Um, always up for a laugh, so um, yeah, big Scotty. Well, listen, hopefully he gets you out to uh, San Diego pretty soon, and that, that, that'd be a nice wee trip. Well, he's not inviting me yet, but um, <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Well, Andrew, hopefully we can get you to, to a game pretty soon here at Edinburgh. It'd be great to have you back. Um, we've obviously got the, the new stadium being built. It's all kind of go. It's all fairly excitement at the club. So we'll get you back soon. And all the best for uh, your season at Harriet's when it does come about. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Cheers. No, I appreciate it. Thank you.